video up last week and half of you weren't here. So we're just going to review really quickly last week's lesson and then we'll go on to this week's lesson, okay? So last week, um, and for the people watching the video, you didn't get a boot camp uh, lesson because our videographer was in the hospital, but now he's better. And Richard, we're glad you're better. So you. let's review last week because last week is kind of part one of today. So um, the exercise sheet that you have there, it says uh, blues exercise. That's the one we started on last week. Okay? All right. So let me, let me give you the basic background and then this, that last week's class will lead right into this week's class. All right. When I started taking piano lessons, and the comments that I get from people online now are, are pretty much all saying, boy, you know, my teacher's so rigid. You know, she, she made me learn scales, she made me learn this, and now, but she never told me what to do with them. So, and that's kind of what happened to me. I went to college and I learned all the basics and I learned the terminology and everything, but I, the picture never took shape for me. It just never made sense. I could read music and I could play music, but I wasn't enjoying the music. I didn't understand how it worked. I just looked at the spots on the paper and I played them and that was it. Then when I got out of college, and now I'm thinking I shouldn't even have gone, because I learned most of what I learned from picking people's brains, ear players, and then pretty soon I started thinking, wow, you know, that's why I had to learn the scales. That's why I had to learn the terminology. So then I started to appreciate the fact that I did know the basics. So as beginners and intermediates that you guys are, you really can't go much further until you have some foundation. You've got to know kind of what you're doing, which pretty much leads us back to, if you don't know scales, you're not going to go very far. Or at least understand the steps of the scales. All right? So I'm going to do a really quick synopsis on, on the scales and what you use them for. Okay? The first thing you use a scale for is key signature. Remember at the beginning of a song, you see sharps and flats? And someone will say, What's, what key are you in? Well, the word key and the word scale mean the same thing. The composer used the D scale to write the song. The composer used the A scale to write the song. All right, how many tones are there in music? Twelve. <laughs> Twelve. Okay, that is probably the most important thing for you to know. There are only 12 tones in music. Look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's it. Then they repeat over, see? Then there's 12 more in this. It's called an octave up. And then there's 12 more. So when you look at an 88 note keyboard or however many keys you have, that's really all the notes you have to worry about are those. There is one scale for each tone. One, two, C, C sharp, D, E flat, E, F, F sharp, G, A flat, A, B flat, B, and that's it. All right. A scale is made up of half steps and whole steps, or half steps, excuse me, all half steps and whole steps. All right? So how many notes in a scale? Eight. Eight. There's eight tones in a scale. All right? Now, when I learned to play scales, I learned one at a time. For a week, I had to play C scales, and then I had to play a G scale, and then I had to play a D scale, and I never really knew until I got out of college that scales had a pattern and I didn't have to memorize them anyway. If I learned the pattern, I knew how to play the scale. So here's how the pattern works. Between the first and the second step of the scale, you have to have a whole step, always. A whole step is two half steps. One, two. From one note directly to the next is a half step. And two half steps equals a whole step. All right? So between two and three is also a whole step. Between three and four is a half. Four and five is a whole. 
5 and 6 is a whole, 6 and 7 is a whole, 7, 8 is a half. So here's how you remember the pattern for a scale. 2 and a half, 3 and a half. 2 and a half, 2 whole steps and a half, 3 whole steps and a half. So watch. If I play C, what note's a whole step from C? D. What note's a whole step from E? <laughs> from D. E. All right. Now, I'm going to run out of fingers if I keep going like this. So after you get to the step right here, your thumb goes under at the half step. That's the easiest way to remember. Thumb goes under, F, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step. And if you finish correctly, you should have a half step at the end. You shouldn't even have to think about that one. Because the scale ends on the same note as it starts on. All right, so watch this. I'm going to play a G scale. Whole step from G, A. Whole step from A, B. Thumb under right here at the half step. What's a half step? C. C. Whole step. D. Whole step. E. Whole step. Not F. F sharp. F sharp. And a half step to G. So the G scale has one sharp. Okay? So that's how some scales have five sharps, some scales have three flats because of the pattern and the way the keyboard is designed. Okay? Now watch. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. In the key of C, or the C scale, the composer used that scale to write the song. That's the Spanish key, by the way. Key of C. If they're watching the video in the Spanish country, they'll laugh. Yeah, I think. Okay, so... That means that I don't have to play any black notes, right? No sharps, no flats. All right, it also means that the, compu that the, computer, the composer used the C scale to figure out the chords that he's gonna use. All right, so watch. If I turn every step of this scale into a chord, how do you spell C chord? Remember I told you to memorize it? C, C oh, you did your homework. The first step of a scale, if you turn it into a chord, is always a major chord. Always. Okay? Called a tonic. How do you spell a D chord? D, F sharp, A. Because I'm in the key of C and there's no sharps, I can't have a sharp on the F. So the second step of the scale is a minor. Okay? Spell E chord. E, G sharp, B. Can't have the G sharp, so the third step is also minor. F A C major. Fourth step, subdominant it's called. G B D major. A C sharp E can't have the C sharp minor. And B D and F B D sharp and F sharp can't have either of those sharps, so that one becomes diminished. But we're not going to go there. Not today. All right, now, let's, let's go back and do, talk about another function of the scale. The melody notes also come from the scales. And the notes that you add to the chords come from the scales. All right, so right now, I want you to totally empty your brain. Uh -huh. It's just left. Gone. Okay? Brain empty, ready to absorb information. Okay? Computing. Computing. Because if you don't, I'm going to lose you. All right? I don't want you to ask any questions. I just want you to accept it. It's the way it is. Okay? I don't know if that was supposed to be on the end, but. All right. C chord, we're going to talk about a C chord now, just one chord. The C chord comes from the C scale, okay? All the chords in the key of C come from the C scale, but now if we're just talking about one chord, the C chord. When I was in piano lessons, they called it a triad. 
Tri means three notes added together. Tri add. The rule to make any chord, major chord, is you take the first, the third, and the fifth step of a scale. Remember, your brain is empty. If I know what you're thinking, stop it. <laughs> okay. C, E, G are the three notes in a C chord. Remember when we spelled it this way? Okay. We're just making one chord now, and the, it also, that's another function of a scale, is one chord comes from it. All right, if I just want to form the chord. C, E, G. First, third, fifth. Got it? All right. Now, but sometimes you see a chord that looks like that. Now, even when you're a beginner, you see them because all the beginners that come in here talk to me, ask me, what's that seven? What's that six? What does that number mean? The number tells you what note, what step of the scale to add to one, three, and five. Okay, now we're going to cheat in a minute, which I think you'd rather do. But this is the legitimate way, the college way of trying to figure this out. Okay, so if it, the chord says C6, it means you play the C basic chord, which you know, right? C, E, and G, and you add the sixth, sixth step of a C scale. Now, here's how I used to do it. I go C, D, E, F, G, A. That's why God gave you all these fingers. Okay? So a C6 is C, E, G, and A. All right? And hold on, because I'm going to show you how to cheat so I can hear your blood pressure going up. All right, this one is C major 7. And that's, what you, that's how you see it. Okay? And you may see this, too, a little circle. Very rarely, but if you do, that's what it means. Okay? C major 7 is 1, 3, 5, and 7. So you spell it C, E, G, and B. And the other one looks like this. The most common one. C7. That's called dominant 7. Who cares? I call it a plain old C plain old seven. This one is the seventh step of the scale, flatted. So it would be C, E, G, and B flat. Now, if I were you sitting there, I'd be going, right, I can't hardly play a C chord yet. Now she wants me to add all these. I know that's what you're thinking, right? I'm, my ear is like itching like crazy. All right, you want to cheat? Sure. When I learned this, I learned from the bottom up. Okay, so I learned to play C, E, G. A whole step above five was six, the number six, the C, six. A half step above that was a seven, and a half step above that was a major step. Too hard. All right, so now erase all the knowledge that you have, and we're going to cheat. You ready? Would you rather do it the hard way? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> the easiest way to do this is from the top down. See? The, what's the easiest note in a chord to find? If I tell you to play a D chord, the D note's the easiest one to find, right? Who cares about the rest? The D is the most important note. So the key is from top down. C major 7 is B, C 7 is a B flat, and C 6 is an A. Okay, so watch. <laughs> you're going to love this. And if you're watching on the video, this is so simple that you can actually make it hard just by thinking about it. <laughs> so, what do you do? Stop thinking. I learned this from an ear player. Ear players don't think. <laughs> yeah. Ear players don't have to think. They only have to listen. So I was 
picking this ear player's brain. And ear players generally can't explain what they're doing. If you say, how'd you do that? They go, I don't even remember what I did. But every once in a while, if you keep talking and you keep asking, you'll get some information. And this was a big one for me. So now you know the basic seven chords, right? Yes? yes? You know that a C chord is pointer on C, up two, down three. Correct? If I ask you to play a major seventh, a seventh, and a sixth right now, you, because the chord is all inverted and twisted around, now you have a problem. But you really don't. Because here's all you have to do. Find the name of the chord, which is what? C. C. That's the easiest note to find. Okay, so I know you're playing the C chord, so find the C. The note that's a half step below C is the major seven. Ha, that's easy. And then if I drop it a half again, it's a seven. So if the chord says C7, you play the C chord, and you find the C, and you go back two half steps, and you will always have a seven. And then if I drop it again, I get a six. So, look at how this chord looks. See how there's a big space here? And a little space here? I learned this from, uh, from an ear player too. I said, how do you know what chord you're playing? He goes, the note at the top of the biggest space is almost always the name of the chord. Okay, so look, big space, little space. Here's the big space, right? Right? Yes. Okay, when I go right, that's your, that's your, okay. your signal. What note, the top is that way. What note is at the top of the biggest space? C. 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 It's a C chord. If I go like this, now what note's at the top of the biggest space? Yeah. F. So all I have to do goes F, F major 7, F7, seven, F6. Six. Six. And they're all right there. Isn't that cool? Yes. All right, look, here's D. Well, I should ask you. See, that's a D chord. D's at the top of the biggest space. Major 7, 7, 6. Done. Okay? Now, what if the chord's in a root position? Well, you can do two things. The name of the chord's at the bottom. I can go like this. But it's better if you put a G note that's on the bottom, just play it an octave like that, and walk back from the G up there. So G and A are probably going to be the only two you'll play in the root position anyway. All right. Now, in my chord book, if you have this book, I'm going to give you a copy of one of the pages. That's all explained in this book, all right? So this is a commercial. If you're watching this, you need to buy this book with the DVDs because the whole back half of it addresses the circle. And now my new, DV my new Circle of Chords DVDs is done okay. that explains all of this, okay? But you guys are lucky because you're here and you have this paper, Numbered Chords Around the Circle. Now, because Greg handed it out, I'm sure. And Carol, <coughs> where can people who are watching the video get information about that book that you just mentioned? On my website. Which is called? SacramentoMusicGroup.com. Right. Or you can go to MusicInNewcastle.com and it'll give you a link. Okay? So, a little commercial. All right. This is how numbered chords work. If you practice this, now you're already practicing C chord, right? And F chord, the basic seven. All right, this is a little tougher. So if you're a beginner, you might not want to go here. Okay, but I want you to understand how they work. Seven chords, and I'll just show you. If I play a C chord, Sixth chord. Uh, let's let's do major seventh first. Listen to a C major seven. If I stop playing right now, could that be a, a, a last chord of the song? Yeah. Listen. See, I could stop there. It, it, you just kind of have to go. Okay, 
am I hanging up here or did it leave me off? It sounds kind of cushiony. See? Like, okay, I'm all right with that. Now listen to a seventh chord. And it goes to E. Now it's an E7. 
So what do I do to find a 7? Find the name of the chord, which is E, and I add the note a whole step to the left. But 2. Okay? Then it goes to an A chord. A, the 7th is a whole step to the left of A. All right? Then D. The seventh, and we'll do this in a minute, we're going to do some hands-on. It's a whole step to the left of D. G. I like the seven up here. Okay, so watch how this sounds. One chord leads right to the next. C chord goes to E. Now watch, if I add that seventh, the next chord, you can hear it almost, is A, A7, the seven, and C. Okay, if you're a beginner, I think it's actually easier to do the advanced one because you play the chord first and then you add the seven. And I left the E out of this progression. Um, I, well, actually, I left it out over here, but it's on the, on the long chart part. All right, so here's what I want you to do. This is your assignment. I want you to play C, E, A, D, G, and C. So you're going to practice this. Whoops. Now listen, here's five foot two. E. Now, I also learned that you, you shouldn't play all four notes of a seventh chord at the same time. You should play the chord first and then add the seventh. It sounds kind of cool. Um, I named it Hamburger Helper. Because the seventh chord just extends the chord and makes it sound better, like Hamburger Helper does to Hamburger. Oh, never mind. C chord, play the E chord. Now add the seventh. Then go to A. Add the seven. Then D. Add the seven. G. Add the seven. C. So you're gonna go C. Add the seven. E. Add the seven. A. Add the seven. D. Add the seven. G. Add the seven. And C. You know how many songs are written with that chord progression? Lots. All right. Now that's what you do with your left hand. Adding the seven to your dropping one full, full step below the root. One whole step below the root. All right, now, so that's your assignment. I want you to learn to play five foot two just the way it's written. And I wrote the chords in the song for you. So this week, the only papers you're going to use are the five foot two song. And if you're watching on video, I can't send you the PDF because of copyrights. But look it up. I mean, it's in every book there ever was written. And it's on musicnotes.com. You can go on that and you can buy it. All right? So C, E, A, D, and G. Okay. The second page you want to use is the one from last week. Remember when we did? That stuck in my head all day. I went around going da 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 da. All right, let's review last week then. Last week we just picked um, uh, just any old kind of rhythm, some kind of box trot. All right, and the PDF file number one on here. Boogie woogie kind of pattern with the right hand. 
So look, all you're going to do is play one, three, five, six, seven flat. So it's one, three, five. You understand what one, three, five? First step of the scale, third step of the scale, fifth step of the scale, sixth step of the scale, seventh step of the scale, that's the seventh, flat. Okay? So C E G A B flat da 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 Then you put your hand in the F position. F A C whole step and a half. So it's F A C, you already know how to play that chord, right? Da 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 whole step and then a half step. Da 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 and use all your fingers. Okay? You have five fingers and there's five notes. Dun, 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 back to C. And then G. Dun, 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 F, dun, 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 dun. And oh man, that is fun. And you're not even playing a song. So you put it on boogie. Let's find a boogie. Blue boogie. And what happens when you start hearing the song? You can't get it. 
Lois told me she had a, what did you say you had, a breakthrough moment? That's what I heard a song about. I was doing. She was doing that. She goes, oh, so amazing. Wait a minute. <laughs> I hear a song. See, what happens when you, when you step out of the box and you start, start to realize that music isn't so rigid, that it really is, people who write these songs, that's all they're doing is sitting there practicing some chords. There's, you know, there's the basic chord progressions that you just have to know. The blues is one of them. And you start playing just C, F, C, G, C, and you will not believe what comes out. Okay, so watch. That was a boogie rhythm. What if we do that rhythm, that, that exercise with a different rhythm? What do you think will happen? Country. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's do, let's you just make a country. You're just running. Yes. Good. Now, I want to show you something. 
really, really cool. If you have this circle, do all of you have this little circle? Yes. All right, if you don't, I have some little mini ones up here. And you're welcome to just grab some before you go. But if you have a circle, and if you're watching online and you have the circle, if you don't, it comes with my Circle of Boards DVD. Watch this. If you take, and I just, I didn't even know this would do this until yesterday. I was so excited. If you take the C and you put the, the note that's a half step right underneath it, B, and then you put the whole step note underneath that, B flat, and then you put the A under that, okay, C, add the B, add the B flat, add the A. That's a C chord, C major seven, C7, and C6. All lined up. Watch. If I move it one to the right, F, E, E flat, and D. And I move it to the right again, B flat, those are the three notes that you add to do the numbers. And it works that way all the way around. It's amazing. This thing never ceases to amaze me. And if you haven't watched the chord videos or you didn't come to the circle class and you're interested in it, it's all on DVD now. Yeah. And I have them. Um, this, this circle will answer every question you ever had about music. Because it's all based on scales and key signatures. And I think in the spring, we'll do another series of the circle, and we'll do it again. Because when I learned about this, and this circle's different than what you see in most books. My circle goes to the right with fourths. Most of them put a G over here and the F over here. But this is the jazz, the blues in the jazz circle. So it makes much more sense um, to use this one. And then, and then we came up with this four-tiered one because, look, in the key of C, the three major chords in the blues progression are C, F, and G, and the D is the standby chord. Okay, so look, if you want to play a blues in the key of C, C, F, G, and C. G, F, C, F, G, and the standby chord is D. If you play in the key of F, it's F, B flat, C, and G. Is that cool or what? That's cool. And every key, you can just move it around key of E. E, A, B, and F sharp. Or G flat, say no. So this thing is just amazing. So I have some little teeny mini ones up here, uh, if you don't have one. And we will be using them occasionally. So put them in your book and, uh, and uh, learn how to use them, OK? All right, let's go to the keyboards.